Welcome back everyone to the Adelphi University Human Performance Lab where we'll be taking you through the metabolic cart calibration process today. We've got a couple things that we need to do before we can start this process. The first is we have to turn the met cart on and the second is we have to turn the heater on. So the met cart switch is on the back, the heater switch is on the front and then we need to let it warm up for about a half an hour. Once that half an hour has elapsed, we can start our calibration process. In order to start our calibration process, we need a couple more things. We need an assembled mouthpiece, and we also need a three liter calibration syringe. So once we've got those things, we are ready to go. The first thing that we'll be doing if we come over to the computer here is the gas calibration. So we'll click on gas calibration on the left and it's going to ask us for some environmental variables. So we've got room temperature, we've got barometric pressure, we've got relative humidity and then it also asks us what the calibration gas concentration is. So we've got a canister of gas over here on the side of the unit and it has 16% oxygen and 4% carbon dioxide in it. This is how we are going to measure any discrepancies in the sensor. So if it measures 16.05 and 3.95 of oxygen and carbon dioxide respectively, we know that there needs to be some sort of percent change. So you'll see that when we finish our gas calibration. But for now, we're going to say that room air at sea level is supposed to be 20.94% oxygen and 0.04% carbon dioxide and the standard gas is as I stated before. So we can go ahead and adjust any of those environmental variables. They actually all seem to be correct based on our weather station over here. So we can get started. We'll hit OK and it'll ask us to turn on the gas cow. So we'll go ahead over here to the black metal wrench on this gas canister, turn it 90 degrees counterclockwise and that will allow for the gas to come through the tubes. We'll click OK and now it's going to sample the room air. So as you can see, you're going to see some varying levels, but it seems to be stabilizing around 20.95% oxygen and 0.11% carbon dioxide. So we know those values are not what we're supposed to be seeing at sea level and so there is going to be a correction factor. Now we're looking at the standard gas and we're seeing that it is coming up at 16.02 and 4.14% for oxygen and carbon dioxide respectively. So you're going to see the correction factor in this next screen after I hit OK and I turn the gas cowl off. So we'll click OK. And like I said, you can see there is a 0.1% correction factor for both oxygen and carbon dioxide, which means that there needed to be an adjustment. If those percentages are astronomical, you know that you have a hardware issue or a software issue and you need to troubleshoot that. But for now, we're all good with our calibration and we can get started with the next calibration, which is the flow meter calibration after we hit save. So now we can click flow meter calibration and before we go ahead and change anything what we have to do is we have to attach our mouthpiece to the metabolic cart collection tube as well as to the three liter syringe. So you're attaching on the clear side, clear to clear and the white mouthpiece adapter to the blue nozzle on the syringe. Now we're ready to get started. Once again, it's going to ask us for the environmental variables, all of which haven't changed, so we don't have to adjust those. We'll hit sample baseline, and this will bring us to our calibration screen. So on the bottom left of the calibration screen, you'll see that it says detection, flushes, and strokes with numbers next to them signifying how many of each. The detection is just to detect that there are, that the air from the syringe is traveling through the system. The flushes are to purge any stagnant air and the strokes are the actual calibration strokes. We're taking three liters of air, pushing it through this system at different velocities to simulate the changing breathing rates during a test and calibrate based on those differing velocities. So we can get started now with the detection flush. 
This is just one full flush. And the purge flushes are also done now. So make sure that you pull the plunger out entirely and you depress it entirely. That way you're getting the full three liters of air going through the system. Now we can start our actual strokes. So the first is going to be the slowest and we're trying to clear the bottom blue line on the right side of the screen. So as you can see, the slower I go, the lower it's gonna be. And I'm just trying to stay within that line. As you see on the top right, there is a number. That's the amount of air that registered going through the system. Now, 2.975 liters is not exactly correct. We know that there are three liters of air going through the system, and so we have to correct for that later on. That's what the system's gonna do with this calibration. So we'll go ahead and go a little bit faster, trying to clear the next blue line, 3.052. Next one, 3.034. Last one. And that is it. So as you can see, we got an average volume of 3.012 liters, which is pretty close to the three liters that we know is going through the system. The difference is positive 0.4%. So 3.012 is 0.4% greater than the three liters. So that is within our range. Our range is less than half a percent off of 0.0. .0. And we can actually get started with our test now that that's complete. So we'll hit save. And that concludes the calibration process.